Hi everyone. If you joined us for our lesson this week on electrochemistry, then this is just a quick recap of everything that we've covered. So we went through what is electrochemistry and we did a bit of a recap cap on redox reactions and what they are. And I then did um, a bit of a comparison between the different types of electrochemical cells. So we get galvanic cells and we compared that to electrolytic cells. And it's important to know the differences and also the similarities between these two. So we started with galvanic cells in the online lesson. We haven't finished that, so we're going to continue with the galvanic cells in our next lesson. And then we also will be doing the um, electrolytic cells in more detail. So um, I'm going to just explain some of the important background information from the redox reactions and that basically comes from a lot of you would have done that in grade 11 so I'm going to go through um, what you need to know and we'll do one quick example of that okay so let's discuss redox reactions before we do anything else so on your screen now you'll see four terms. I've put the oxidation, reduction, oxidizing agent, and reducing agent. So you need to basically understand what these all are. And they all come from, as I've mentioned, they all come from part of your grade 11 chemistry. You would have covered that. Um, hopefully, if not, we're going to quickly recap it now. So first of all, what is a redox reaction? A redox reaction is a reaction in which we've got a transfer of electrons okay so that e with a, a little dash on top that is transfer of electrons so if whenever we've got electrons moving between different substances in a chemical reaction we call it a redox reaction oxidation is when we have a loss of electrons reduction is when we have a gain of electrons and I, I often find that students get confused between number three and four there so oxidizing agent and reducing agent so you can remember it like this I mean, there's many different ways to remember it but the oxidizing agent is the substance that actually undergoes the opposite it undergoes reduction okay so if you find the substance busy undergoing reduction that is the oxidizing agent and then likewise, your reducing agent would be the substance that then undergoes oxidation. Right, so on the screen here, I've got an example of a redox reaction. It's not a balanced redox reaction, but that's fine because we're quickly going to recap how we see wh which part of this reaction is oxidation and which part is reduction. Okay, you should know how to do this from grade 11, but if not, we're quickly going to do the recap. So you grab a cokey or a different colored pen and let's underline the substances that are similar. So here we've got Cu solid and we've got something similar on the other side of the arrow the Cu2 plus. So they're both kind of copper. The one is copper zero and the one is copper two plus. So we're going to draw an arrow like that. Uh, let me change colors now to a gray. And then again, we're going to underline with a gray, the silver plus, the Ag plus, and on the right hand side, the Ag solid. And let's draw an arrow between those two. So we've, we've identified our pairs immediately by doing this. Now something else, um, you should also know from grade 11 how to work out oxidation numbers, but I'll quickly do a recap. So if the charge is present, so you can see at the moment, uh, let me quickly change colors to a purple. So at the moment we can see on top of the Ag+, plus, plus 1 is the oxidation number there. And on the right hand side, the copper 2 plus, the 2 plus is the oxidation number. Now when we have a substance that is just on its own, with no charge, then the oxidation number will be 0. So here our copper on the left is 0, and our silver on the right is also 0. Okay, next thing, we're now going to actually go and write something on each of these arrows. So the copper, you can see on that pink arrow, it starts being a charge of 0, and ends being a charge of 2 plus. Now the question is, does it gain? Is it a gain 
or is it a loss of electrons? You must remember that electrons are negatively charged um, entities. So if you're starting with a zero charge and you end up being more positive, it means that you must have kicked off two electrons. Okay, so in other words, if you become more positive, you have lost electrons. So that's a loss of electrons. So remember that. If you become more positive, it's a loss of electrons. Okay, so that's a loss over there. Right, I'm going to cross out. Gain. Let's change to gray and let's look at silver. So silver starts at plus one and silver ends up being a zero. So over here, to become a zero, this one's a bit easier to see. It would basically gain an electron and then become a zero. So it's overall becoming more negative. If something gains negatives, becomes more negative, it's a gain of electrons. Okay, so here, this is going to be the gain. Now, on the last screen, we said that a loss of electrons is oxidation. I'm just going to write ox. And a gain of electrons is reduction. I'm just going to write red. And then from this, we'll then be able to write out our two half reactions. So I'm going to write this now at the bottom of the screen here. So I'm just going to write ox. So my oxidation half reaction would be, I'm going to start with copper solid. Right, we know it's a loss of electrons. So I'm going to draw my arrow. It becomes a copper 2 plus aqueous. Now, to become a copper 2 plus aqueous, it means it had to throw away two electrons, right? And that's it. That is now my oxidation half reaction. My reduction half reaction, we are starting on the left-hand side with Ag plus aqueous. Remember, it's a gain. So on the left, we need to add the electron. Then I've got my arrow, and you'll see that I've drawn my arrows in line. Get into the habit of doing that because when you eventually work out your net ionic equations and you balance them, it helps so much to see what's on the left and what's on the right. Okay, then um, that becomes an Ag solid. And there we go. We've got our oxidation and our reduction half reactions. Okay, if I wanted to, you don't necessarily have to. You've got to read the question. But if I wanted to go a step further, also just recapping a bit from grade 11. If I wanted to go a step further and I wanted to write out the net, I can't really fit that in there, but I'm going to write net ionic equation. Okay, so I'm going to write the net ionic equation. The first thing that you need to do, which is super important, and I'm actually going to change to a red now. You need to make sure that your electrons are balanced, in which, in this case, we can see they're not. The top equation has two electrons, the bottom one has one electron, okay? So we need to multiply either your top or your bottom, or sometimes both, so that your electrons will actually cancel out. So they need to be the same number. So if I multiply everything on the bottom equation by two, okay, then you'll see I've got... Over there, I've got two electrons. And on the first equation, I've also got two. So now we know they are balanced and they would basically cancel out. Then we can write out the net ionic equation. So I draw my arrow first. And this is where I said we need to keep our arrows in line. We draw our arrow first. And then below that, you basically write everything on the left. So I've got my Cu solid from the top plus now we keep the two because it's now balanced. 2Ag plus aqueous arrow. Now we add up everything on the right. Cu, 2 plus aqueous plus keep our 2Ag solid. Okay, so you can see we've actually come back to the same equation that we had just now um, at the top. So let's just draw an arrow there. Okay, I've drawn an arrow there in light blue. You can see we've got the same equation, but by doing this, we've balanced it. So we've used the electrons just to balance, and then we've, we've shown the final redox reaction there when we've put the oxidation and the reduction half reactions together.
Right, so I hope that that example made sense for everyone. If you are a part of our online um, school, if you've joined our online lessons, then we're going to be carrying on from this further next week. Um, if you've got some questions and you are a part of our online school, you're welcome to send through your questions uh, to us and we'll get back to you on that. If not, I have put the web address. If you'd like to join us for some online lessons or if you'd like to ask us questions or read up more about how we do our lessons, um, please visit the, the website, www.amandaownonline.co.za and you can read up more, find more information or, or pop us an email um, if you want to find out how it works, etc. We've got um, live interactive online lessons for physical science, grade 10, 11 and 12. It's based on the South African curriculum. So have a look at it. Um, it's a fun and easy way to actually get extra lessons and learn about science, etc. For those of you who were part of the lesson um, and now you've watched this video, I am going to do a further video. So the next one that follows on after this, I'm just going to write there. So next, if you're following with our videos, um, I'm actually going to do a video on galvanic cells versus electrolytic cells. So I'm going to look at... So I'm going to look at the similarities and the, especially the differences between the two. And then after that, we'll be doing some examples of galvanic cells and how you can work with them, how you can work out the EMF, um, what's happening, how to draw them, all things like that with the galvanic cells, which is actually really super important. And then next week in our online lesson, so this is basically just for our videos, if you're following our recap videos, and for our online lesson, for those of you who are a part of our online school, next week um, I will be covering uh, electrolytic cells. Well, I'll be covering galvanic cells in a bit more detail, and then I'm going to go on to electrolytic cells. And there again, detail, how do we draw it, um, how do we identify different examples, application questions, etc. Okay, so that's just to let you guys know where we are here. now. If you've got any questions, um, send them through to us, or otherwise pop over to the website and have a look.